reading the last words of Jesus, taken from the King James Version of the Bible. Luke chapter 23, verse 34. Then said Jesus, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And they parted his raiment and cast lots. Luke chapter 23, verse 43. And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, Today shalt thou be with me in paradise. John chapter 19, verse 26 through 27. When Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciples standing by, whom he loved, he said unto his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then said he to the disciple, Behold thy mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her unto his own home. Matthew chapter 27, verse 46. And at the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. That is to say, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? John chapter 19, verse 28. After this, Jesus, knowing that all things which were now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, said, I thirst. John chapter 19, verse 30. When Jesus, therefore, had received the vinegar, he said, it is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. Luke chapter 23, verse 46. And when Jesus had cried with a loud voice, he said, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. And having said thus, he gave up the ghost. Hence the reading of the word. Good morning, good morning, FNC family. Hope everybody is doing well today. May the words of my mouth and the uh, meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. Uh, for the sake of brevity, I wouldn't read the scriptures over, but I would focus on Luke 23, verse 46. In particular, the phrase that says, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. Now, if you look at all of the other gospels, Luke is the only gospel writer that penned these words. So the question might be asked, why didn't the others? Truth is, we see things through the lens of our history. And his story, Luke's story, is that he was a physician. So Luke was telling the story of Jesus from the perspective of a doctor. Just to prove this point, out of the 37 miracles that were performed by Jesus, Luke, Luke recorded 21 of them. That's almost 60%. Now, what is so interesting about these words, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. The first thing that pops out to me is this. This is a command, and the operative word, the word that makes it a command, is commit. To, to commit something, according to Oxford, means to give or bind. Now, the question is, what is Jesus giving? He said he's giving his spirit into the hands of the Father. Now, what's interesting about that is this. The spirit we know is not something that's tangible. It's not something we can touch, we can see, or we can feel. Now, the truth is we can influence where our spirit's destination is in the afterlife. But we have, or we lack the power to send it where we want to go in this particular time or this realm. Now, like I said, he didn't ask a question, but he gave a, a command. And what's interesting about that is this. The deeper meaning in it is this. This command speaks truth to power. The truth is that Jesus had the power to put his spirit in the hands of the Father, which means then that he has power over the spirit realm. Now, this should bring happiness and joy to us because really and truly what this means is that Jesus is who he says he is, which is the Son of God. Because only someone who is connected to the main source can do such things. And the significance for this as us who are believers is that we can hold on with assurance onto every word that Jesus uttered while he was here on earth. So even though today is Friday, Sunday is right around the corner and joy comes in the morning. 
Let's shift gears here. During my studies, I realized that it wasn't found, these words weren't found in the other Gospels, so I did some more searching to see if I could find these exact words penned anywhere else in the Bible. And I did, to my amazement, in Psalms 31, verse 5, where it says, Into your hands I commit my spirit. Redeem me, O Lord, the God of truth. Now, David, the author David of the Psalms, the Psalms David uttered these words, but it came in a different context. Now, if you look at it, Jesus said these words when he was transitioning from this realm to the spirit realm. But David said these words, these same words, Father, into your hands, I commit my spirit, but he was still living. That's interesting. He was still living, but if you study the life of David, you would see during that time that he had a lot of enemies, a lot of people that were against him, that were planning vicious things for him, even so much so that they wanted to overthrow him. Now, the message in it is this. God does not want us to wait until we reach death's door to say, Father, into your hands, I commit my spirit. Like David, he wants us to do it while we're living. Because even though Jesus said it when he was transitioning, the truth is Jesus lived those words. It was a lifestyle for him. He committed his whole life into the hands of the Father during his ministry. Now, something else that I want to make a connection with, which is one of Jesus' other last words is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? These exact words, word for word verbatim, can be found in Psalms 21, verse 1, where it says, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from saving me, so far from the words of my groaning? Now, what's the message in this? Let's pause for a moment and think. For these two powerful men in scripture, and we know the significance of Jesus to the Christian faith. For these two men to utter these words, it means that the weight of what they were experiencing had to be immense. So much so that they felt forsaken, not literally or in the literal sense, but there was some kind of void, some emptiness, some loneliness for them to get to this point. They were at a crossroad or an impasse where they said or felt like they had been forsaken. Now, this would suggest to me that they were in a state of emergency spiritually. Now, let's switch gears here again. If we look at what's happening around us, globally, we are in a state of emergency. And many people are asking God this same question, Christians and non-Christians. And let's be honest, everybody on this platform, all of us can, I know without a shadow of a doubt, can say that we have reached that same point at some time in our spiritual walk where we felt like it was just us against the world. And it was almost like we felt like God wasn't there. Now the question is, what do we do in those times? Do we stop dwelling in the shelter of the Most High or cease to abide under the shadow of the Almighty in connection with what we were studying uh, last Sunday and the Sunday before that? If you look at Jesus and David, when they were at their lowest points, they turned to God. In chronological order, if you see the scriptures, Jesus said first, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? After that, subsequent to that, he said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. Same thing with David. David in chapter 22 said, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And in 35, chapter 35, he says, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. So this brings me to an important point and also my topic, which is, your 911 moments reveals your true character as a Christian. Your emergency moments, the points that we, where we find ourselves at our lowest, the most challenging, the most critical times, is what reveals our character as Christians. Now, many may ask, how do I know whether or not I'm following the guidelines and I'm 
I can rest assured that my spirit is in the hands of the Father. The answer can be found in Galatians 5, 22, verse, verse 22 and 23. Reading from the New International Version, it says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Now, what I want to point out with this scripture is this. Most times when we, as Christians, talk about the fruits of the Spirit, we actually add an S onto the word fruit. But if you look at the scripture, it just says fruit, no S, no plural. So what that suggests to me or all of us is that these nine things that are mentioned, love, joy, peace, etc., these are all a part of one fruit. So in order for us to know whether or not we are displaying or have the fruit of the Spirit, we must encompass and practice day by day all of these things. I submit to you, if you only practice eight and leave out one, you still don't have the fruit of the Spirit. It's, uh, it's imperative and incumbent upon us that we practice daily all of these things. Now, in my conclusion, I'm going to tie everything in. Because you're trying to figure out Luke, Jesus, David, us, global pandemic. What's, 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 what's the message in all of this? The reason why God allowed Luke to write those words, and we can't find it in any of the other Gospels, the Synoptic, nor John, is because he wanted us, the hidden meaning in that is he wanted us to see it coming from that of a doctor, which would suggest implicitly that he wants us to be concerned about our spiritual health. Then, even though the words, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit, was Jesus' life, uh, last words. Like I said, it was a lifestyle. And we see the connection where David said the same thing. So he wants us to be able to put ourselves in a position where we commit our lives in his hands and our spirits in his hands. So in closing, I'd say this. Just want to leave you with these words. Pattern becomes habits. Habits form character. Character is what you do, not what you say. What you do is far more important than what you say. It is actually who you are. So when we find ourselves in our 911 moments, our emergency moments, make sure that our spirits or our spirit have been committed in the hands of the Father. Be blessed.